Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Maddo, and welcome back, finally, 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 after all this time, to the next Dental Practice Fixers podcast. Wow, it has been way too long since we've talked together here in Dental Practice Fixers podcast land. What a crazy, crazy, crazy time. I don't care how long you've been practicing, none of us have ever seen anything like this COVID pandemic and how it's affected dentistry, how it's affected our lives, how it's affected the world. It's just been so bizarre. Um, I graduated dental school in 1984, finished my residency in 85, and um, bought my first practice in, I think, late 86. And then we were dealing with the AIDS epidemic and nobody knew what to do. And, you know, talk, it was a whole new world for us with PPE. We didn't call it PPE at that time, but it was, it was quite a, a trauma in dentistry. And then fortunately, um, you know, we learned how to deal with that. And um, there have been some great strides in AIDS research and treatment and all of that's been fantastic. Then, you know, 9-11 came and there was a little economic blip that came with that. Then the real estate and economic crisis in the late 2000s, you know, 2008, 2009, 2007, whenever that was, and things finally settled down and and everything was great. And then boom, this crazy, crazy virus hits. But fortunately, most of us have reopened already. And those that haven't are preparing for their reopens. And from everything we've heard, in general, things are going better than expected. People didn't know what to expect, but patients are coming in, you know, are distancing both uh, socially distancing, as we say, and also between appointments and, and doing our, all of our extra steps to clean the rooms and texting our patients while they're sitting in their cars. All those things are working out and it's difficult and it's time consuming and it's costly, but it's working out and we're definitely seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. But man, never, ever, ever before have we ever seen anything like this. And that's why we took a, a break from the dental practice fixers. We didn't feel it was right to be doing mystery shopper calls during this time. But don't worry, we're doing them again. So you've got nothing to worry about. So we're back. Uh, We'll actually do some COVID related mystery shopper calls today. So I'm really excited to be back with you all. And again, I'm Dr. Richard Maddo. And I'm without my partner, Dr. David Maddo today, my brother, my business partner, my friend. And he's on a little break just for now. He'll be back soon enough, but I'll be doing the next few episodes by myself. So again, thanks everyone for being here. Um, And I'd just like to start off once again by reminding you that, hey, we love great ways for you to save money each and every month, each and every week, each and every day. And the best way we've ever seen is to have Fat Merchant do your credit card processing. Fat Merchant doesn't charge an overage fee every time somebody uses a credit card in your office. It's just a low monthly fee, so you'll save money. Um, In the COVID era, they've really upped their game on contact-free charging. So a bunch of different ways for you to do that, including those little machines that you just hold up and your patient inserts the card. And we'll be announcing in the next few weeks even some more major changes to the Fat Merchant interface for dentists. So if you haven't switched, now's the time. Go to mado.com slash save, M-A-D-O-W dot com slash save, S-A-V-E. Learn about how you can save money each and every month by using the fastest growing credit card processor in dentistry. All right, fantastic. So before we get to our calls, I want to talk about a question that came up on our Dental Place um, Facebook group the other day. I'll just read it to you. It says, question for the brain trust. I'm getting a lot of resistance from my longtime front desk staff, parentheses, two of them, regarding having someone answer phones at lunch. We are normally closed from one to two. I feel like we should have someone here to make sure any phone calls are answered. They want to eat lunch together. Is this a battle I should fight? Years ago, we had three front desk staff and it was never an issue. I just feel like we are missing opportunities and not serving our patients the best we can. Any input would be appreciated. So, wow. Two team members working the front desk, they want to have lunch together. And because of that, the phones are not being answered between 1 and 2 p.m. I think we had about 70 different people on our Facebook page pitch in and give answers. And a lot of people said, um, hey, this is your front desk team. They deserve a break. Let them go have fun for one hour. Put the machine on. Patients will always leave answers. Well, I got to say, in the words of my friend Bob Lefts, it's 
I couldn't disagree more. Think about a new patient. You know, your new patients work too, and they've got one time during their workday, some of them, to find their new dentist. That's during their lunchtime, and it could be from one to two. And out of all the dental practices in the world, they're going to call yours, and no one will answer because your front desk team has to have lunch together. Well, you know what? I love having lunch with people too, but this is a business. You cannot have a phone be completely unmanned from one to two. As a matter of fact, when we do mystery shopper calls, close to 50% of the time, the phone's not answered. It could be during regular hours. And if you're getting this message during regular business hours, we're too busy treating other patients. Too bad. The most basic rule of customer service and new patient acquisition is that phone needs to be answered every time it rings. So that's my simple answer. How do you do it? We'll leave that up to you. There are so many ways. Staggered lunch hours. If they go out together, um, forward the phone, the office phone to a cell phone and make sure they pick it up. I don't know. Be creative. Have a retired team member come in and babysit the phones if you're off on Fridays and then during your lunchtime. Whatever it is, I don't care how you do it. That phone needs to be answered and it needs to be answered by someone who's extremely adept and competent at getting new patients, potential new patients, off the phone and into the appointment book. So check out our Facebook page. It's called The Dental Place. You can go search for that on Facebook. Um, it's only for dentists and team members, so you have to kind of apply, but you know we'll let you in. <laughs> we'll certainly let you into it. Then you can see all the answers to this question. You can post a question, read about what other people are talking about in The Dental Place. It's a really friendly group. We don't excoriate people that differ, have different opinions or tell them how stupid they are like all the other dental Facebook groups. So it's a friendly place. It's a safe place. So check out The Dental Place on Facebook. Okay. I wanted to do something COVID related for our mystery shopper calls today. And, you know, I know that it's not typical that somebody's calling and saying, is it safe to come into the practice? But I know it's happening all the time. I know some practices that we're working with or getting those calls. How should they be handled? It should be so easy. So we'll talk about that. But first, let's listen to maybe three quick calls about how to deal with this situation. So let's go first. We'll go to call number one. Let's hit it. This is Jennifer. Uh, hey, are you reopened from the COVID pandemic? We are. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And is it is it safe to come in just for regular routine care right now? Yeah, we've been doing that and, you know, taking all of our precautions, temperatures and masks and gloves and everything. Oh, good. Are you seeing new patients now? We are. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much for the information. Uh-huh. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. I'm going to put that in the not horrible. I mean, she was nice. She was friendly. I think she could have done a maybe better explanation. We say we're taking temperatures, we're wearing masks and gloves. Well, I hope they are always wearing masks and gloves, but I guess that applies to the non-clinical team as well. But then what happened? Jeez, we've heard this a million times. I mean, I couldn't have let her on anymore. I said, are you taking new patients? Are you taking no patients? New patients. Isn't that our dream call? Someone calls and says, are you taking new patients? And then she says, yes, we are. Okay, click. Goodbye. Mm, unbelievable. Could anybody, anybody, anybody do that again? Let's see. Let's move on to our next secret shopper call of the day. Okay, let's hit it. Let me help you. Yeah, have you reopened from the COVID? We have. Yeah, and is it is it safe to come in at this point? As far as we know, we've been open since May. Oh, really? Are you, are you doing anything differently? Just, not really. we just cleaning everything like we normally do. Mm -hmm. So nothing's really changed? We wear masks. Oh, We good. clean everything. Mm -hmm. Clean everything. Great, great, great. And are you, are you seeing new patients at this point? Um, right now we are. It depends on what kind of appointment you need, but we are booking right now into July. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Wow, that office actually cleans everything. I mean, come on. Convince me it's safe to come in. Uh, we wear masks. 
Um, yeah, we clean everything. Well, I hope you clean everything. It's a dental office for Pete's sake. You mean before COVID you weren't cleaning everything? I'm totally not convinced. Um, she says, oh, yeah, we've been seeing patients uh, since May. And nothing's changed. Everything's the same. I mean, come on, man. People are worried. We've got a highly contagious virus that's still in the news, not just every day, but every minute. And somebody wants to come into your office. They really need to be reassured that you were doing the right thing. And then, again, I fed her the, the number one line of all time, are you seeing new patients? Oh, yeah, we are. We can see you sometime in July. I mean, come on. I, let me see. I don't even know what day it is. When I'm doing this recording, it is June 22nd, 2020. And she says, we can see you in July. So that's at least eight or nine or 10 days before the appointment. I have a feeling it's going to be about a month before she's making any other appointments. And, you know, this is really important, too, um, in your new patient strategy. If you can't see a new patient for a month or six weeks or eight weeks, it's nothing to brag about. I know I've said this a million times. It used to be the big thing to brag about at your local study club. Oh, we're so busy. We can't see a new patient for three years. Well, you know what? Your practice is not growing. You have to be able to see new patients right away. What happens? You know, potential new patient calls and you put them on the books three weeks from now. Well, they might not tell you this, but maybe they were having an issue. Maybe they were having a little pain or sharp edge, or they noticed a little bleeding when they were brushing or flossing. Well, that issue goes away. They could lose interest in coming in. Or maybe they were all hot and bothered for some reason to come in at that time. But, you know, things happen in our lives. Three weeks go down the road. You get busy. Something else comes up. Oh, I think I'll just no show on that dental appointment. Or they tell their, you know, out talking to a friend or, or, or they're Zooming, they're having a Zoom conference with a friend and they happen to mention they're going to a new dentist to the part. Oh, who, who are you going to see? And then the friend says the four most dangerous words in dentistry. Never heard of them. And then what happens? They go on to see someone else because that friend recommended their dentist, who's the best dentist in the world. Get new patients in right away. It's essential. You got to do it. So that practice blew it on so many levels. Their explanation of what they're doing um, to keep the office safe was horrible. And then they just said, yeah, we're, we're seeing new patients. We can see you sometime a month from now. And they never asked for the appointment. Don't do that. Okay, let's do one more call. Same question. Now, I think the, f the first part of that call got cut off, but pretty instantly they answered. They said, hold, please. Thank not, you for holding. That won't hold we this into this horrible hold music. Soon. Please hold the line. We'll be right back with you. What a great way to start a conversation with a potential new patient. Will they ever pick up? Pick up. Thank you for holding. How may I help you? Sure. I wanted to see if you were reopened yet after the pandemic. Yes, sir. And is it is it safe to come in, do you think? That's uh, totally up to you, sir. Mm -hmm. How do I know? Uh, we have people coming in all day long, so, I mean, I don't know how. Wow. Okay, let's make a few comments here. First of all, the whole time was completely, completely unacceptable. Um, it was just way too long. At least they had a message and some bad music. That's better than nothing, but it was way too long. And it was the very first thing. The second she picked up the phone, hold, please. I mean, in real life, I would have just hung up. Then when she finally did get back, and we edited this a little bit, but it was over two minutes. On hold, over the two minutes again, most people would have probably hung up. But um, she came back, and you can hear all this chitter-chatter in the background. It sounded like a boiler room. You know what a boiler room is like? Um, so people are trying to sell you aluminum siding for your house or something. And it's a total rip off, rip off scam and scheme and all that. It's just way too much convert. When a new patient calls, they shouldn't be hearing all that chatter in the background. Let's get a little more isolated or soundproof or something, or people should know that if everybody's, if somebody's on the phone, just keep it down a little bit. So that was bad. So we've got two strikes and then. She just said, oh, well, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not doing anything different. Uh, some people think it's safe to come in. That's up to you. Click. Bye. Oh, my God. We're, come on now. I want to hear that you're doing something different. This is a really serious issue. I'm obviously ready to come in, but I just have some questions. I just want to know that I'm safe. What are you doing in your practice that's different? Um, 
We're having patients wait in cars if they can, and we'll text you. We won't text you until the room is 100% ready for you to walk right through so you never have to sit in our reception area. Um, we take all of our patients' temperatures before they come in. We take our team's temperatures every day to make sure nobody has a fever. And we're using hospital-grade uh, filtration masks for your safety. I'm always making it about them for your safety and for your comfort. Whatever you're doing, we've got a, a HEPA air, air filtration system, and we've got uh, plastic lucite barriers. Whatever you're doing that's different, tell them. Stress it. Let them know. We're, we have... Purell stations in every room and we're making sure that all of our patients make sure their hands are sanitized before they touch anything. Surely you're doing all these things. So don't just say nothing's different. Don't just say, oh yeah, we wear gloves and masks. Come on. This patient had a question. Sell it to them. Get enthusiastic. How tough can that possibly be? Let's do it. And then of course, all three of them made the biggest mistake ever. A new patient wants to come into your practice and we didn't offer them an appointment date and time. What is going on here? What do you think? Could your practice do it better? Do you want us to call your practice? Please do so. Send us an email. Send it to info at matto.com and maybe we'll call your practice on the Dental Practice Fixers podcast. And maybe, maybe, maybe next week we'll play a call of an office that wows everybody in podcast land and really gets it right. I hope so. So, Let's call it a day for today. I don't want to keep you too long. I know everybody's crazy busy getting back to business, trying to get things back to normal, dealing with all the issues that we're dealing with. So I just want to thank you for taking time to listen to our comeback episode of the Dental Practice Fixers podcast. I'm Dr. Richard Maddow. And please tell your friends, give us a rating. You can find the Dental Practice Fixers podcast on um our page, matto.com. Just go there and click to the podcast link. Of course, we're on iTunes and Google and Spotify and Stitcher. We're on YouTube. Anywhere you look, you can find the Dental Practice Fixers podcast. So thanks so much for spending some time with us. I'm Dr. Richard Matto, and I will see you soon, maybe even next week. Thanks so much.